Hey, what's up, guys? Paulo Munoz here, and welcome back to this mini series of masking tools and masking tips for ZBrush. In this video, I'm going to cover my favorite way of adding details to a creature or a sculpt that I'm working on using custom masks. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush in the standard UI. Uh, this creature head that we that I have here is what I, I end up with in the last video. So I'm just going to revert back to the Dynamesh one. Uh, that has a little bit more details as well that we created in the first video of this series. All right, so the next tip that I'm going to give you is slightly different. It's, it's not necessarily the most uh, common way to go about uh, adding details or the, the most common way to approach the detailing phase of a, of a creature, but it is definitely really fun and it could be a, a great way to explore uh, patterns and to explore details based on mask, uh, which is, you know, the, the focus point of or, or the theme of this series. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is load a an alpha or load an image, a black and white image, right? So I'm going to go to the alpha palette. Let's actually dog that to the left hand side. So click on the alpha palette dog that to the left and click on import. And I'm just going to bring in a couple of alphas uh, that I just got from the Seabrush Guides website. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have these two alphas. So I have this one that is like a skin pattern and I have this creature that's a little bit more fainted. Uh, but these two will be uh, a good starting point for this way uh, of adding details. So the next thing would be to select the masking brush. Obviously, that's what we're going to be using to to mask our character. But one of the great things about this tip is that once you understand how this works, you can try a whole bunch of different things and they're all going to give you slightly different results. So by holding control, I can access my my mask uh, brush. As you can see, if I let go, um, I actually need to reset my damn standard brush. Let's, <laughs> let's go to brushes and reset all brushes, right? So that um, I can just remove the the alpha from the dump standard brush, the dump standard brush, and I have the standard one. So I just want to show you this because I think this is the most important part of the trick <laughs> is that if I hold the control key, I essentially can access the settings for just the, the masking brush, right? So what that means is that if I, with the, with the standard brush selected, if I click on an alpha, I can just select you know, one of the alphas that I just loaded. But it also means that if I hold the control key, I can also assign an alpha for the masking brush. So I can click on this one, right? And you'll see that this alpha is only visible when I press the control key. So basically the, uh, the masking brush now becomes uh, something a lot more interesting and complex because I'm using an alpha. So let's go here and I'm gonna hold control and start doing this. And you see, you get all of these stripy areas just we, uh, you know, <laughs> just by using a different mask, right? Um, and that's it, right? It's just I just wanted to show you that you can do that. Now the the actual technique that I'm going to use for this workflow, let's clear that mask, is not only changing the alpha or adding an alpha for the masking brush. It's also changing the stroke. So by default, this is what the stroke looks like. It's just a freehand stroke, but I can go ahead and again, I'm holding control so that I can access the settings of this masking brush. I can click on the stroke palette and I can change it to drag rect. So now what I'm going to be doing is holding control, click and drag, and I can drag just the, the masking, right? So it is a very complicated or not complicated, but intricate mask that, you know, looks really cool, but I haven't actually added any details. So. I'm going to show you how I would add those details, but I want to show you also, you know, a couple more things that you can do. So let's clear that mask, holding control again. Um, I'm going to also reduce the, the focal shift. And this is the, the technique, or this is the slider that we use when we created our custom mask, the sharp mask in one of the videos in the series. But it's, you know, it's a setting that can also be used to, to reveal a little bit more of that, um, of that alpha. So if I click and drag, you'll see that we now have uh, slightly you know, let me just do a comparison here so that you can see what I mean. So if I hold control again and make this focal shift positive 50, click and drag. And if I make it minus 100, hopefully, hopefully you can see that uh, by reducing the focal shift of the control um, of the masking brush, we end up with a little bit more of that mask or that alpha. It is probably a lot more visible if we change that to maybe a square. 
all control and now we have we can click and drag to create this mask and if i reduce this focal shift it's almost like a like a circular maybe not that much so that you can see the effect you can sort of see that it's a, a square but it's not well defined and that's just changing the focal shift so let's clear that up go back to you know something like 70 and change that alpha you know we can use the this um this skin pattern uh, in this case this will need to change to a, a different focal shift but you know just wanted to show you that that's what i'm doing so let's select the one um, that i want to start with so i have this pretty clean area and again this is a technique that i would only use at this point that i and i'm quite happy with the primary shapes like the silhouette and the major forms of this creature um you know everything is i kind of like see where this is going I'm not planning to change the secondary forms too much or the or the general uh, silhouette of this guy so i can jump into details using this technique so i'm going to use this surface area to hold control again and let's bring in symmetry again Control, click and drag and i'm just going to use this same alpha to add a few details in here well at this time we're not adding anything we're just masking uh, with a rather complex or intricate mask pattern and we can even go over the same area and just add a bit more, right? And the fact that we can sort of like click and drag to generate something really large or make it smaller, that also helps us to, to define like areas that, you know, we're gonna add the same type of detail, but at a different scale. So here I'm just dragging little bits and pieces for some tiny bumps. Right, but again, this is just a mask. Is uh, we so far we don't have any details. If I hold Control and H, which if you remember from previous videos, this is what I have assigned to hiding the mask. In case you haven't seen any of the videos from the or any previous videos from this series, um, I'm just referring to this in the masking palette. I'm just viewing the mask, so it is hiding the mask, but the mask is still there. So, um, as you can see, there's still no um, details, but I can invert the mask right and i can just add or move these details just in this area so i want to hide the mask i want to bring in my move brush so let's go ahead and do that and now because i have that mask with that intricate pattern from that alpha i can go ahead and do this i can just push those details which i think is uh, is fantastic right and the difference between doing that uh, what i'm doing right now and actually you know projecting an alpha let's say with a standard brush let me just do that so that you can you can see the difference so so far what i have here is the same thing as if i were to invert the mask and let's do it here if i click and drag i'm just basically adding these weird details with the masking brush and this is more of a a standard or a more a traditional approach of detailing just using something like the standard brush a drag rate and an alpha to click and drag and add a bunch of details right so you can totally do that however this this process with the with the masking brush let me just go back to the move one and invert the mask so this process allows you to maintain the mask so the mask is still there so you can define things like this right and if you want more details you can just come back and, and pull a little bit harder or you can use the smooth brush maybe you know let's go and change for a different smooth brush like the smooth peaks and maybe reduce the intensity of that smooth brush a little bit so i can go ahead and do that um, and then i can still you know keep pulling and pushing from that area but i'm not overriding the details because uh, as in every time that i click and drag uh, if i were to do it with a standard brush i will be overriding some of the existing details whereas with this one i already have the mask so i'm just trying to refine that specific area with the move brush the smooth brush uh, you know you can use something like the inflate brush so the inflate brush it allows you to do this type of weird sort of growths um, because again it's just limited to the area that that we left unmasked thanks to that to that alpha all right so i'm just going to smooth all of that all right so that becomes um you know hopefully you can see how how powerful this is it's it gives you a lot more control over refining these tiny details than if you were just to click and drag to 
<laughs> to generate them. So now I can clear that mask and let's go ahead and do, you know, uh, another detail or another set of details using the other alpha just so that you can see, um, you know, how I would use this for things like, you know, skin or, or something like that. So for that, the first thing I want to do is scroll down to the morph target. This one right here, the morph target palette. Click on store morph target. So that saves this current state of the model. And now let's go ahead and hold control to access that mask. And by the way, you can create multiple masking brushes for details like this. So you can save this one and then just select a different brush, a different alpha, sorry, uh, for this masking brush. And I'm just gonna try it out here, right? And I wanna change the focal shift of, of this one. So hold control and change that. So something like that, and that way you can save another masking brush, right? And all of these alphas are free to download in the ZBrush Guide website. So you can just go to resources, alphas, and, and just right click and down, download them. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. So I would use this alpha in areas, let's say, if I, if this was a humanoid creature, I don't know. Um, and I know that this alpha is not necessarily for this area. This is kind of like a, maybe like the, the back of a hand or something, but you can just click and drag click and drag, click and drag. Again, very in a very similar way as what we had before or what I showed you before with a more standardized way of adding details. But in this case, we're just literally painting the mask, nothing else. And I'm gonna show you kind of like an automated way of generating those details uh, in a very nice way. All right, so let's say we are sort of happy with this. Um, what I'll do is let's go to the masking palette. We can invert that mask, right? So there's only some crevices here that are um, that are masked and the rest is not. And let's hide that. And we can go to the deformation palette and I can go ahead and increase or inflate just that bit. So just by doing that, look how, how easy it is to control all that region and the and the intensity of all that region with a simple mask that's why maskings i keep saying that um maskings are like the core of or at, at the at the core of having control over your details and and general uh forms right so look at how easy that that is and it creates a very interesting set of details and obviously there is uh we need to work on the transition of those details and that sort of thing maybe i don't want to have any of the those um lines around the the eyelids, and that's precisely why I saved a morph target before I went into doing these details, because I can select the morph brush. Uh, again, I covered this one in the previous video, or, or you know, a way to use this morph brush. So I'm going to select that, and this is the the previous state. This is the new state. So with the morph brush, I can basically erase back to that previous state. So I can do this to remove certain areas that I don't want to have those details. Um, you know. Maybe this area here as well. And the rest could be just the smooth brush, right? Um, and keep in mind that, you know, this is a pretty easy way to go about it and generating details, uh, but you can have more control, even, you know, even more control than what I'm showing you with this masking technique um, by using the morph target and also the sculpting layers. Let me just show you that uh, again very quickly. Where are we? Uh, layers here. So for example, um, let's go ahead and delete the morph target. This is just an extra tip, nothing to do with the masking that I already showed you. <laughs> so I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna store the morph target with this current state here at the back. And I'm also going to enable uh, recording for one of these layers. So I just click on this button to create a new layer or a sculpting layer, automatically will start recording. So now that we are recording, again, um, I'm gonna use this alpha um, you can use any alpha, but I think this one would work just fine. Let's hold control, click and drag. And again, you can variate the size, obviously. And I'm going to add this a little bit, you know, randomly. Um, this is a this is the part of the sculpting or the detailing process that I would spend more time just trying to figure out what where to add the details rather than just adding them. Because that's, as you can see, that's the easy part. So I have those set of details in there. I'm just now gonna go ahead and invert that mask, again, hide it, and now we can go to inflate and do it like so. So now we have this really very well, very well um, detailed, you know, piece of um, 
a creature, I don't know, like it could be for a growth, but it, it is very sharp, the set of details, and it creates um, a very interesting, yeah, a very interesting pattern. But, you know, you might not want everything in the same place or at the same intensity. So that's the reason why, let me close all of that except the morph target and the layers. So these two. So the layers allows you to play with or or to change the intensity of all these details. And the morph target allows you to control where you want to actually place those details. So what I'll do is first um, use the slider on the layer, reduce the intensity. So I don't want to have this, these details to be that strong. So I can, you know, I have control over how much of that. Uh, in fact, you can also go in minus in this layer and just invert the effect just by doing that. So that's another tip there for you. So let's just go for something like that. Let's say I'm happy with this, but there's some stretching here and some areas that I don't want. So in that case, I will just create a new layer and this layer is gonna have the, the controlled placement of these details. So with the morph target, I can go ahead and start erasing or painting whatever I don't wanna have those details. Right? And the rest could be smooth brush. I'm just going to clear the center area just so that it's very clear what I'm doing. Right? So now we have in this layer the control placement of the details thanks to the morph target. At this point, if you want, you can just delete the morph target um, because essentially you have the, the control placement in this layer and you have the intensity here. Right? And once you're happy with all of these, you can just go ahead and bake all the layers if you wanted to, you don't have to, but um, and just go over certain details and use the smooth brush to fine tune it. Right? So that's the reason why I find this uh, way of detailing in ZBrush using the custom masking brushes and alphas for the custom, um, the custom mask, oh, sorry, custom alphas for the masking brush, the one of the most powerful ways to um, to add details and have control over the placement of your details in your models. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you have found this tip useful. Again, if you haven't tried this technique and this workflow, uh, it is definitely worth exploring. You can uh, achieve like really intricate and really interesting patterns uh, very, very easily. And it's all about the masking. So hopefully you found this useful. And in the next video that we're going to use to wrap up this mini series, I'm going to cover a great way to save your mask and create very intricate uh, patterns and very intricate masks and save them, which is uh, one of the key aspects of, you know, being able to spend all this time creating masks and then being able to use them afterwards. So I'll see you in the next video.